when it comes to arthritis, there's three major types. We have rheumatoid arthritis, we have osteoarthritis, which is also known as degenerative joint disease, and we also have gouty arthritis. When it comes to rheumatoid arthritis, you guys got to remember that it's a systemic issue. This is the part where your immune system, your white blood cells, for whatever reason, they don't identify your own tissue, they don't identify self, and they start destroying it. Now, most commonly, it's because it's a systemic issue, it's going to happen all over the body. A lot of the membranes, the pleura, the pericardial sac, the uh, membranes of the eyes and kidneys. So it's a multi-organ um, disease. However, it's primarily manifesting through your joints. And keep in mind that in rheumatoid arthritis, it's going to be a bilateral issue. It's an inflammatory issue because your immune system is destroying those tissues. And usually it's going to be bilateral. So if it happens in one elbow, it'll be in both elbows. Same thing with ankles, knees, hips, and of course the hands and so on and so forth. Keep in mind, like I mentioned, that it affects the organs because it is a systemic issue. So you also have to be assessing kidney function, respiratory function, cardiac function, because it does affect the membranes that are located in those organs. Now, when it comes to labs, you want to look at basic elements like ESR. An ESR is the um, erythrocyte sedimentation rate. And so what we're trying to find out is how fast do the red blood cells drop to the bottom when spun around. And the faster it happens, the faster it indicates that you have an inflammatory process. We also look for something called a, a C-reactive protein. Now, the C-reactive protein is a protein that's um, usually... Um, elevated when you have an autoimmune issue, which this is, of course. We're also going to be looking at the ANA, the A, oops, the ANA, the anti-nuclear antibody. And so these are also uh, some of the labs that are going to be present when you have autoimmune issues. Keep in mind that there's a variety of autoimmune issues, and so we have to continuously rule out other conditions um, until we narrow it down to rheumatoid arthritis. So those are just some of them. Um, when it comes to the deformities, you're going to notice that the patient will sometimes develop um, swan neck deformities, deformities of the hands, of the phalanges, of the wrists, where they permanently become deformed, and there's no way for you to actually reverse it. That's why a lot of the times for these patients, we provide braces so they can maintain the anatomical position. So there's no issues with that. Uh, keep in mind that we'll also have boutonniere's deformity. We're also going to have... Um, uh, permanent deformities of the hands, and in order for us to prevent those deformities, we must apply a brace. Medications for these patients include NSAIDs, also COX or COX-2 inhibitors. The benefits of uh, COX-2 inhibitors, such as naproxen, is that they don't have as profound side effects as your NSAIDs. People that are experiencing rheumatoid arthritis are consistently having these flare-ups, and keep in mind that when you have an inflammatory process, your body becomes very fatigued. So a lot of these patients will be hospitalized because of lack of energy. So us as nurses, our nursing implications include giving a diet that's high in calories, high in protein, providing adequate rest periods, promoting sleep, adequate healthy sleep patterns, and elements like that. Um, we have other treatments such as surgical procedures. And we also have um, phlebite, uh, not, I'm sorry, not phlebitis, but we have aspiration of the plasma so we can remove the antibodies or plasmapheresis. And the antibodies that are located inside our bloodstream are destroying the tissues in rheumatoid arthritis. So what we do is we remove some of that blood and plasmapheresis, we remove the antibodies that are destroying your own tissue, and hopefully that will alleviate the symptoms. Keep in mind that some of the most basic nursing interventions are something that we have to adhere to. So patients that have rheumatoid arthritis are going to have significant morning stiffness. As the body warms up, it allows for better articulation of the joints. So it's important or it's imperative for us as nurses to promote rest and warm baths in the morning or something to warm up the body to speed up metabolism in order to maintain movement of those extremities or those joints, excuse me, and to, and to prevent the deformities. You could also develop vasculitis. This is inflammation of the blood vessels, which can lead to ischemia, which can lead to a decrease in perfusion to a variety of our organs. And that's why we must always assess the organ function when it comes to rheumatoid arthritis. The next type of um, arthritis that we have is degenerative joint disease or osteoarthritis. So my mother cleaned houses her whole life. So my mom was always wiping windows and mopping floors. And those articulating joints are always breaking down when you use them repetitively in that fashion. So what happens? Well, the body tries to heal itself, 
But the problem is on the articulating surfaces, you have like scar tissue that develops and it limits mobility. That's what osteoarthritis is. It could also be secondary to injury. It could also happen to people that were very obese because it puts more weight on the knees and ankles and hips. And that can lead to articulation that breaks down. And that's why we call it degenerative joint disease or the degenerative joints. Keep in mind that osteoarthritis, even though it's got the itis in it, it's considered a non-inflammatory, non-systemic issue. It's usually unilateral when you compare it to your rheumatoid arthritis, which is bilateral. So in, the, in osteoarthritis, it affects usually just one joint. If it affects the right elbow, it might affect the left hand and then maybe the left knee, but it's usually not symmetrical. So that's important for us to be able to distinguish from RA to OA. When it comes to labs, we're going to be assessing a lot of the labs that we assess for rheumatoid arthritis, including one that I didn't mention here, but rheumatoid factor. Now, rheumatoid factor is a specific protein that's increased when you have rheumatoid uh, arthritis. However, the reason why we assess all of those labs in a condition that we know won't have them is because we have to find a way to rule out this type of condition, rheumatoid arthritis, that manifests very similarly, especially in their initial phases, compared to osteoarthritis. They're both very similar. So the labs usually deal with that. So we can start eliminating. If we don't have rheumatoid factor, if we don't have an elevated ESR, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, then we're confident that it's perhaps not rheumatoid arthritis and maybe just degenerative joint disease. Now, the specific deformities that you have when people have osteoarthritis, the articulating joints, remember, they try to heal themselves, but they develop kind of like scar tissue on the surface of them. So you will see some nodes on the fingers and normally the proximal node when it's in when it's uh deformed we call that bucard's nose you can excuse my pronunciation but english is my second language so if i mispronounce it i hope you guys understand but what i like to do is when we talk about the hand the proximal compared to the distal so the closer reminds me of the alphabet the lower in the segment of the alphabet b comes before h so the Bucard notes come before the Heberden's nodes, and that's how I usually memorize them. So just remember that Bucard's and Heberden nodes are specific deformities for osteoarthritis and not rheumatoid arthritis. Medications, we also use NSAIDs. We can also use steroids. We can use medications that decrease inflammation, but keep in mind that anytime you're giving these drugs for either of these patients, we have to assess the GI system because it may potentiate the gastric bleeding and things like that. Gouty arthritis is the third type of arthritis that we'll be discussing. And gouty arthritis is a little bit different because it's a metabolic issue. That means that it could either be primary where your body is not excreting enough uric acid in relationship to how much it has inside. And then secondary can be attributed to a secondary issue such as kidney failure, such as the ingestion of certain medications like aspirin. So that's the main difference between primary and secondary gouty arthritis. But what you guys got to remember, it's a metabolic issue where your body cannot excrete enough uric acid and it tends to accumulate, generally speaking, in the metatarsophalangeal area, which is usually your big toe. Now, it doesn't always settle there, but accustomed, I'm, I'm sorry, but usually it settles in the big toe, but it can essentially settle. The accumulation of uric acid can accumulate anywhere in the body in any of the joints, sometimes on the skin. Keep in mind that when we talk about gouty arthritis, we have to look at our uric acid levels, which will be elevated. And we have to be mindful of the, foods, of the food elements that we're consuming. Anything that contains uric acid are called purines. So when we talk about food that's high in uric acid, we call them, we say that they contain purines or they're high in purines. So you want to avoid purines in the diet. Tofi is the word that we give to the accumulation of purines anywhere on the body. Sometimes it could be like skin tags on the ear, on the skin. Sometimes you get flaky skin of all the accumulation of the uric acid and your pores trying to get rid of it because the kidneys can't get rid of it. So we have to also look out for tofi. Know what it is. It's an indication that your body is excreting the uric acid, various other forms, such as the pores of the skin. Now, when it comes to labs, I mentioned that we assess the uric acid. We assess the uric acid level. We also assess the ESR, the erythrocyte sedimentation rate. And we can sometimes assess some of the labs that we discuss here, again, to rule out osteoarthritis, to rule out rheumatoid arthritis. So sometimes the labs are pretty similar all across the board. Okay. 
Medications, we tend to give endomethacin. We can give NSAIDs. We can give COX2 inhibitors as well. The primary medications that we're going to be giving is going to be your colchicine and your allopurinol. So just remember that for colchicine, it's got that C there, and that reminds me of the C for acute. So colchicine is going to be given for acute attacks. Let's say you guys want to go to San Pedro and have some mariscos. All of that food is highly, um, it has a lot of purines in it. So when you have one of those events or you have a weekend where you're drinking a lot, which alcohol also contains a lot of purines, we're going to be taking colchicine for the acute attacks. But allopurinol, you take it al, no, not al, but all the time. It's the medication that we take for prevention of the attacks, for maintenance. So just keep in mind that colchicine is given for acute exacerbations and allopurinol is given for the maintenance. And when I mentioned aspirin here is because you don't want to give aspirin because aspirin may contribute to attack when it comes to gouty arthritis. Keep in mind that the main manifestation in gouty arthritis is going to be pain. These patients manifest a lot of sensitivity to the area where the, where the purines or the TOFI is accumulating and it becomes very sensitive. So it's not uncommon for us as a nurses to anticipate a foot cradle on the bed so it can, we can put the blankets over the foot cradle so it won't put pressure on the toes. And that's gonna be your main issue when it comes to these medications and this condition. Always remember to increase fluid intake and assess kidney function, your BUN, your creatinine when it comes to these disorders such as gouty arthritis.